hello guys welcome to my channel it has been a long time so if you want to chit chat listen a conversation while you are doing other stuff <laughs> i think this is a perfect video so let's jump to the video i want to say congratulations to one of my friends she's international medical graduate and she got into a program for do um an associated in nursing so she passed her license. So as an international medical graduate, you have different pathways. And some of this pathway is to be a nurse in the United States. So she transferred her credits and she got into um, nursing school. And then she finished the program and she took um, a license test, you know, as the doctors, the nurse in the United States have to take a test that I don't, I don't recall the name, but I think I don't recall the name to be honest, but I know she took a license test and she passed it and she's officially a registered nurse. So congratulations to her. Hopefully in the future, <laughs> she's going to tell you, I mean, she's going to tell us about her experience with this different pathway, how that worked, how she got into this program, how, how was um, her experience with the licenses, how different is the, the test as an international medical graduate, is the same test and all of that. But I think this is gonna be a different topic for another day. But I want to say congratulations to her and I'm, I feel so proud. <laughs> so let's talk about also about the new pathways. So as, as you said, as International American graduate, um, it has been a lot of changes related to um, how to practice medicine in the United States as, as a foreigner. So one of the stuff that was happening really since a couple of months is that we has, we have seen a bunch of new pathways. And we have a lot of questions related, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and in June, they have a meeting with, with the, like, the different institutions that regulate um, medical school in the United States, also practice uh, medicine in the United States, the ECFNG and multiple orga organizations. They have a meeting in June talking about these new pathways how that's gonna work, different questions, different proposals, how to implement these pathways. I know Dr. Sebas from Project ING, he went to that meeting and he said he's gonna do a, a in the future, he's gonna do a, a pause or a podcast, just talking deeply about his experience and what's going on. But um, that meeting happened in June, and I know in the future we're gonna have updated about how that's gonna work. Because um, as we all know, uh, there's a lot of stuff, but we're still like, oh, how that gonna, how that gonna work? How they gonna implement or this and that and different options and different like questions. So I guess they are, they are like recollecting um, the right information and trying to figure it out how, how they're gonna work. But um, that's gonna be for the near future. Also um, about, let's see, also about a step three. <laughs> oh my God, I haven't seen a new, like in June too, uh, about the USMLE step three pass and fail. I was reading an article so the American Medical Association wrote an article that is called Move USMLE Step 3 to Pass Fail to Boost Resident Wellbeing. So in this article that you can that you can get in their website, I'm gonna leave the link in the description box below. So they made an article saying how positive it's gonna be just have pass and fail and get rid of the numerical score for USMLE Step 3. As you know, <laughs> USMLE Step 2 is now pass and fail and we don't have any score anymore. I also recall that I saw on Twitter, I think that was in April or, or May, they also made a post just talking about just have everything pass and fail. And, and now, the 
the American Medical Associ Association, they released this article on their official website about talking how positive it's going to be USMLE at step three pass and fail. So this is not like, and like something that's, oh, it's going to be pass and fail. They talking about the topic and how positive it's going to be. And they discussing the positive stuff and the negative incomes about it. Um, outcomes about it, what I mean, outcomes ab about um, this topic. They're talking about that um, assembly yes, step three, uh, most of the people take it during uh, residence, which is really hectic and really stressful uh, period. And they said, um, they said that one of, it's gonna be better if they modify different points. The main point that they said is change, changing USMLE step three and to, to a passing and fail a scoring and don't have any numerical score anymore. Also, USMLE step three, it's two days and they wanna just have everything packed in one day instead of two. And, and also it says, uh, it's gonna be better for this. It said changing the assembly step three from numerical score examination to a pass and fail examination, changing your assembly step three from two day examination to one day examination. They think it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a better income because it's, it's gonna impact in a positive way mental health and other stuff. You know, as as you can imagine, this is a lot of like positive and negative feedback about this article and the, narr the narrative about um, this topic. But I guess we have to wait to see what is gonna be the next step and I guess they're gonna have meetings, they're gonna have discussions, they're gonna have surveys about everything this topic and we're gonna like have a final conclusion also in the future. But it seems like the the trending and stuff is like they wanna put everything pass and fail, or maybe most of the steps pass and fail. But I guess this is a huge topic, and they're gonna figure it out in the future. Also, let's see. So let's talk about um my step two journey. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I have to say this. ESMLE step two is 100% better than ESMLE step one. In my personal opinion, I like more a step two than a step one. Because step two, I sometimes I feel like, oh my god, I this is so platonic. I don't think that I'm gonna get um, that up that case in my daily practice. But for a step two, no. So every concept that I study, I can see like, oh well. I got a patient with the same condition last week. Oh, I got a patient with the same condition yesterday. Oh, I just saw a patient <laughs> with this condition a couple of hours ago. So I'm my right now I'm doing Anki and New War. I made I made my Anki cars based on the E War. So that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> But, but I have to say, the questions are so lengthy. Sometimes I, I got questions that are ridiculous long, like almost two pages, just a question. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? But um, I feel like my a step two um, journey has been more as smoothly than a step one. However, I still struggle because um, I'm working in a project for a, I'm working in a, in, in like a research project and I'm doing a lot of stuff and I have to make time for a study for a step two because for a step one, I have more, my time uh, was more dedicated to a step one and, and I was basically doing Basically, I was doing a step one. I was doing a lot of stuff, but at the same time, my main, my my main, step was a step one. Now I'm doing a lot of stuff. I'm doing clinic. 
and doing research and doing a step two and then volunteer I did this and that and I feel like I don't have enough enough time to do a step for a step two for dedicated for a step two so I'm basically in a study when I have time and sometimes I'm really tired and I have to make time for a study step uh, for my step two and sometimes I have to wake up really early to have a couple of hours for a study for a step two so I struggle a lot uh, with consistency because um, at this point motivation is it's not part of the game you know uh, for a step two you for in general for for all the steps you have you have to be really disciplined and I struggle with discipline for keeping uh, keeping going with my uh, schedule and like a struggle I try to study every day for a step one for a step two uh, maybe a question bank, maybe a, a podcast, because I listen Divine in Intervention, which is a really good podcast. Sometimes I, I just do Anki, sometimes I do Anki and the, I listen to the podcast. Sometimes I do E-Word, but I feel like I struggle a lot with uh, consistency and also with the review system. You know, sometimes I feel like I kind of neglect the reviewing. I'm doing Anki for sure, but I feel like, I don't know, that I, I should do more. I don't know, maybe just me, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's what I feel. I struggle a lot with consistency. And I, consistency. It's something that really, yes, um, I have to work on it. And, but beside that, I feel like step two is going, okay, it could be better. But, you know, as I said, it has a lot of stuff. And I'm trying to multitasking. Um, but let's see how that going that far. Now let's talk about ERAS application or ERAS applications. I like ERAS, but I know a, a bunch of people also said or oh, ERAS, ERAS, ERAS. I like both, but I like more ERAS application. Have made a ERAS have made a couple of changes, and I found a post on Instagram. The user the username is Med Aesthetic. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the link of this post on Instagram. In the description box so you can check it out and support this account that do a really good job <laughs> with that kind of stuff and i love 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 this pass so med aesthetic make like a sum up of all the changes they change in fee structure change in number of signals hobbies and interests and interview scheduling so the first change that we have is change in fee structure. For the 20, for 25 season, the application fee is $11 for the first 30 programs and the 30 per program after that. So the first um 11 the first uh, the first programs is going to be $11. The the first various um programs is going to be 11 and after that everything is going to be 30 30 dollar per program in the last year in 24 there was a a different type of of prices from one program to 10 programs you have to pay 99 dollars from 11 to 20 19 dollars each one for 21 to 30 programs was 23 each one and for 31 and plus, it was 27. So we have different type of prices in 24, but in 25, we have only two prices. The first the first serious program, you have to pay $11, and after that, it's gonna be 30 each program. Also, change in number of, change in number of, of signals. The number of signals is a specialized a specific it has changed across a specialty this year so in that case she mentioned internal medicine in 24 internal medicine only have seven signals now in 25 we have 12 signals three are gold signals and 12 are silver and hobbies so in 24 last year hobbies uh, this they say for for March twenty four, hobbies uh, was included as part of the experience section of the ERAS application, but in twenty five it's gonna be a only one section like 
for everything, like 10 students. And the interview scheduling is going to be Talamus um, core. And you can check it out, as I said, the original pass. He did, I mean, she did a, I think it's a girl, she did a fantastic job, sum up everything. So a sum up here, basically, we, uh, for the fee, we only have two fee. Uh, 11, $11 for the, the first 30, 30 for the first 30th program, and then everything is gonna be $30 each program. Second, we have increased the amount of signal, which is gonna be different in every specialty. The same amount of signal that we have in internal medicine and family medicine and surgery is gonna be different. But in general, the amount of signal increased. Also, we have now 10 experience. We have only 10 experience that include everything, clinical, research, everything. Volunteer hobbies, 10 experience that impact our life and also our CV. And the interview scheduling is gonna be in the Talamos matter. So, but yes, I highly recommend, I, ha I highly recommend it to check it out, her pass, which is gonna be in the description box. So I think this is for this video. I already talk, I already do a sum up of everything. I thought this video is gonna be longer, but no. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm talkative, but um, no, this video has to has be shorter than I thought. And also, I have made a couple of videos, and you can check it out related to different topics that I talk in this video, and I talk deeply in other videos. So this video is just a sum up, just a chit chat, as I said. Also, you can follow me on TikTok and also on Instagram. I'm more active on Instagram than TikTok, but I try to work on it. And also <laughs> follow me here on YouTube. Thank you for, thank, oh, oh my God, what I'm saying right now. So thank you for being here and see you next video. Bye.